Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. In this tutorial, we'll be going over how to set up your level's loading screen and preview images, as well as giving you some Steam Workshop description tips. So first thing I want to do is show you where the preview and loading screen images are. If we go to our map name and launcher, we can right click and open up the map folder. Once here, we're going to open up the zone folder and we'll see our loading image and preview image. Let's open these up in Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, that's completely okay. Other image editing software will also work for this. Let's go ahead and create a basic loading image now. So we have our loading screen. Let's do the exact same thing with our preview image. So now that this is done, we can go ahead and save both of these with the same exact name. We're going to override the original images that we were given. So again, head to our map name, zone, and we're going to override these images. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and open up Ape. When we're inside of Ape, we want to make sure that no filters are applied here. And then we're going to type in for the name black. The type we're looking for is image. And you're going to want to look for the GDT named code. I have two, but that doesn't matter as I'm looking for this image right here that's black. You can see that I already have a loading screen loaded. This image is universal and have to be replaced every time you upload a map to the workshop. Now that we have the image selected, let's go to our texture and we're going to browse for our loading screen that we just created. If you're in your map folder and you can't see anything, that is because down here in the file type, it is TIFF. We have to change that to PNG. Now that we selected our image, make sure that image usage is 2D. We have a compressed texture. Mip map is disabled and we want it to also be streamable. Once your settings are exactly like this, we could press Ctrl S to save and that is it for Ape. Next, we're gonna to want to go to our Black Ops 3 root folder and we're going to scroll down to open up Zone Source, All, Asset List, and we're going to want to open up Core underscore GFX. You can open this up in any text editor you prefer. I use Sublime for scripting, so I'm opening this up in Sublime. Once opened, we're going to find this exact name, Image, comma, Black. Once found, you're going to want to put two slashes just before this to comment it out, like so. Once done, we're going to want to press Ctrl S to save, and that's that. Last but not least, we want to right click our map in the launcher and hit Edit Zone File. All we need to do now is add in the loading screen image that we've added into 8 before with the same exact name. So to do that, we're going to type in image, comma, black. Save this and close it. Now all that's left to do is to link, compile, and run our map. Now that we've launched Black Ops 3, you can see our loading screen loads properly. And if we head back to the main menu, you can see our preview image loads here. Next, I want to go over some workshop description tips and how to upload your map to the workshop to make yours look a little bit more professional. When uploading your map to the workshop, make sure to give it a title in capital letters so it looks similar and flush with the other maps in your game. Next, a description is in place. This will also appear in game as well as on the workshop, but the workshop description will be editable. Keep it short and simple so it doesn't override and look massively weird in Black Ops 3. Next, we're gonna to need to create a thumbnail. Back in Photoshop, I always create a 512 by 512 image. This gives us a perfect square thumbnail that will also be short in file size. Workshop thumbnails have to be under two megabytes, otherwise you'll get an error in your launcher. To select your thumbnail, just browse here and find wherever you saved it. I saved mine in user maps, map name, zone, next to our other images. Next, let's go over the tags. These aren't super important, but these are good for organization's sake. I always tick map and zombies. When you click OK, this will start uploading your map to the workshop. This could take some time depending on the file size of your map. But since this is just a tutorial level, there's nothing in it, it should take fairly quickly. 
When your level is done being uploaded to the workshop, you'll get this little pop-up. Click yes to open up the workshop page now. As you can see, the thumbnail worked and we have a description. The current visibility is hidden. That means this item will only be visible to you and anyone else who marked as a creator as well as admins. To add or remove contributors to your level, all you have to do is go to owner controls and here you could find all your Steam friends. To add images or videos, you're going to click Add or Edit Images and Videos. And here you can upload files. Any YouTube video you can attach a link to. And make sure when uploading images, they are 16 by 9 ratio and lower than 8 megabytes. Next, let's go over the description. This is where you can change it and make it look fancy. Steam descriptions are written similar to HTML with formatting. I'll include a link in the description where you can find how to format your workshop descriptions. I wrote something simple here. So now if we click save, back to your item, you can see that it worked. This will also not affect your level in Black Ops 3 unless you update it. When updating your map to the workshop, it will take the description from the workshop and try to place it in Black Ops 3. In order to not do that, make sure you go back to your edit title description and copy everything that already exists. And then back in your launcher, when you go to publish the new update, make sure you change the description to what it originally was. Since you copied your old description, once you update the map again, you can just go back to your workshop item and repaste in the description without messing up your Black Ops 3 map in-game. Next, let's go over banners and how to add them to your description. For banners that I make on my workshop maps, I tend to do the width by 1024 and height by 256. After creating your banners, we're going to go to an external website to get the HTML code for them to put them in the workshop. I like to use Imgur because it's free and it's very easy to use and it already gives you the code to set this up. All you have to do is click on new post and drag and drop your images here. Once done, you can go up to here to the three dots and get your share links. Copy the BB code forums link here. Back on your workshop item, if you go and edit the description, you can go ahead now and paste in your banner that you've just created. If we go ahead and click save, back to your item, the banners will now be present. GIFs also work in this exact manner as well, so if you have any GIFs you would like to add here, go ahead and do so now. If you have a YouTube or Twitter that you would like to link, you can add them right to the page here by going down to links, add links, and you can add your Twitter, YouTube, or alternatively, you can also add Facebook, Polycount, Reddit, or Sketchfab. Click update when done, and it will be updated. For other links, such as a PayPal donation link, we're going to go into our description. If you go to the text formatting link in the description below, all the way at the bottom, there's one on how to create a website link. I will do so now. After completed, we'll go click save, back to your item, and here's our new link. You click on it, and it'll bring you to the website that you placed. To change the visibility of your workshop item, go down to change visibility, and you make this public, friends only, hidden, or unlisted. Public is for everyone, that's an official release. Friends only will only be available to your Steam friends. Hidden will make sure that only you and contributors can see it. And Unlisted will be available to the public, but only with those who have a link to the exact workshop page. Lastly, we can go to Discussions, and we're going to create a new discussion for bug posts. So to do that, we're going to click Start New Discussion. So we're going to create a bug report. If you have found any bugs, please post them here. We're going to click Post Discussion. And then to make sure everyone sees it, we can go and pin this thread down here in the moderator tools. So now if we go back to our item and scroll down, you'll see the popular discussions. Bug report is pinned. One last thing, we can also edit our change notes. If you click on the change notes tab, you can see every time this workshop item was updated at which time. If you would like to take the extra step further, you can go ahead and edit this to make it look more professional. When you're done writing this out, you can go ahead and press save, back to your item, and if you click on the change notes tab, we'll see what you have posted. And that's it. All right, that's going to be it for this tutorial. 
If you found anything useful and I was able to help you today, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to be notified of all future videos and live streams. Thanks for watching and have a good one.